Howdy hackers and welcome to another episode of Fairlight TV. This should be number six I hope and we have upgraded the equipment again. Now we're using a full DSL camera so let's see how that is. If you have any comments on the video quality and all of that please leave a comment on, down below and we will have a look at how we can improve if you think this is not good enough. This time we're talking about program development. That's the basis for hacking a program so you need to develop parts of the piece of software that you were sort of messing with. So, and since this is a question I've been asked a lot, how do you set up your working environment for developing your stuff on the C64? This is what we're going through today. So first of all, you have the option of, of doing stuff on the native machine. You would have like a machine code monitor on a cartridge or something, or even a software based one. And you can type the code. But anybody who ever tried that fully understands that it's absolutely impossible to do any larger project that way. Because inserting stuff into the code is a nightmare. You need to move code. There are machine code monitors with special feature for helping you doing that. But it's still a totally waste of time to do it that way. It's so inefficient and there are so many easier ways to do it in a proper way. The next step is sort of using uh, a native assembler on the C64. There you would have like a turbo assembler, which was the one that was predominant amongst the demo coders on the C64 community back in the days. Uh, but you still have a number of rather significant constraints. First of all, you have 64K of memory. Um, you have the assembler eating a lot of that. You have source code eating a lot of that. And then you should fit your your result code and the, the music and the graphics and all of that into the same memory space. You basically couldn't do that. And even if you could, even if that was fully fine for you, you would still have the issue of the very, very, let's say, clunky keyboard. I'm sorry if I, I, I upset people by saying that, but having used other keyboards and moving back to the C64, the keyboard really isn't good. It really isn't. The screen estate is very limited. And also when you want to store stuff on the disk, it eats a, a chunk of your disk and then eventually you run out of disk space, which is also a nuance. And version control, you, you can't do that. There is no like comparison of what are the edits you did before between this version and this version. There are so many constraints that you simply don't have to face if you're doing this right. The the slightly less chunky uh, ish, well option you can use would be a cross assembler where you have the stuff in one machine. And now we're talking two 664s. So you have the chunk in one machine and then you have a little receiving res routine in the, in the destination machine. And then when you assemble, you send everything over to the destination machine using this little receiver that that's fine but you still most of the constraints of the C64 still applies the i mean the screen and the keyboard and the, and the version control and that that still applies even if you use a cross assembler and then you also need two machines on your desk a, a little better version of that is the ram expansion unit assembler uh, the turbo assembler XS 3.3 by Fairlight is a, is a super example of what was best of breed back in the days. Because there you had the source and the assembler in one bank of the RAM expansion unit. You had one bank where you had all the data, so your music and your graphics and all of that. Uh, and then the third bank was sort of the destination bank. So when, when the source bank was swapped in and you edited in that, and you press the assemble, the first thing that happened was that bank one was copied into bank two. So you had a fresh set of the music and the graphics and all of that. And then the, uh, the source was assembled or the assembly was put into bank two and then bank one was, sorry, bank zero was swapped out and bank two was swapped in. And then you executed the program and you only needed one page, pretty much like a, a, a cross assembler setup but without the screen, uh, the desk estate being eaten by two machines. 
and it was also a lot faster than of course than, than cross assembly so that was best of breed back in the time but i wouldn't recommend it for anybody today there are so much better things you can do if you're using this on a bigger machine uh, i'm using windows 10 so this is a pc based setup and i will show you how i do it okay so what do you need when you're developing on a pc first of all you need somewhere to type your text the source needs to go somewhere the second thing you absolutely need is an assembler that's the program that takes your source file and then makes it into the binary the c64 can run the third thing you need to have is some environment where you can run that code you can run it on a native c64 but the better option is to run it directly on your PC. So you need an emulator. And most predominant version that's been used by basically everybody is Vice. That's an open source uh, emulator that can do C64, it can do C128, and, and a number of the other Commodore machines. And then if you want to build some sort of environment around that, unless it's already combined for you, you need some sort of glue that makes them sit together. So in your text editor, you can have stuff like syntax highlighting. So you see the, the, the source code, not as plain source code, but you can see the, uh, the uh, mnemonics as one color and the uh, parameters passed as one and, and all of that. So we will have a little bit of look, uh, a look at that. And then of course, key presses for fast assembly and all of that. Okay, now we're moving into one of the options. This is CBM PRG Studio. Um, yeah, so this is a, a rather comprehensive all-in-one solution. Uh, it has all the pros and cons of one of those all-in-one kind of solution. The biggest pro is that the threshold is very low. You need not to find the different components and combine them yourself. Even if you have guides, that could be a nuance. So this is download and install and you're good to go. The drawback would be that if one or more of the components are not good enough to you, for you and, and you would like it some other way, you cannot simply kind of rip that out and replace it with something else. This is what you get. It's all in one. Uh, but just letting you, we're not going through the details here, but, uh, and I use this for one particular thing. I use this to code basic in. Uh, I don't code much basic, but uh, I'm just in the process of, of trying to reverse engineer basic program, compile basic programs. And I do have the compiler. So in order to see the result of compiled basic, I type the basic here because typing it on the native C64 or even inside the emulator is too much hassle. It's a lot easier here. So I use this for coding basic, but of course that's not a, the only thing it can do. That's sort of one of the very few thing it, it can do. Uh, assembly files would be here on the left. Uh, character set, so there is an editor. Uh, it shows that on the other screen. So this is if you want to design your own character set. Very nice. Uh, if you want to design your own sprites, you see my absolutely brilliant sprite here and uh, yeah so you design your sprites that's fine yes i should save it because that masterpiece cannot be lost to history uh, screens if you want to design your screens there is already a masterpiece here you say now i want this piece of character and i draw it like that and then that character i don't know if you can type no you can't uh, or at least i can't so this is how you design your screen. Uh, and then there is also here, screen map, quick select, yeah. So uh, a good screen editor, I would say. Uh, again, if you're designing games, this might be good enough for you. Uh, probably you would like a separate one, but at least this is sort of a more than decent starting point for you to start your, your, your projects. Interesting here as well is the music routine I'm showing you here, uh, where you can also add a keyboard. Again, it's opening on another screen. I really don't know why. So, so here you would have uh, a keyboard for you and you can type a number of value and how that works is beyond me. You have to find out yourself. Music is not really not my thing. But so this is uh, a very, very brief summary of what CBM Program Studio is. Very, very good program.
Okay, the next uh, option I'm also going to show you is using VS Code. So VS Code is Virtual Studio, the, the text editor for that. To that, you can use uh, a plugin called Kick Assembler uh, C64 for Virtual Studio Code. It's going to be renamed, I've read recently, Paul Hocker doing this. So you add this and this is the glue between the VS Code and the other things you configure here. So what you configure, uh, and again, bear with me because this is not really my favorite environment, is you uh, you can here point to Kick Assembler. So you need Kick Assembler, which is, I would say again, sorry for abusing the word uh, predominant here, because this is absolutely still the predominant tool used by demo coders. Uh, it's a super good assembler for the C64, taking the source code and generating the output you want from it. Uh, it uh, it supports stuff like breakpoints and uh, yeah well we should see my source code here. Uh, so this is one of my old projects. It's actually written for Kick Assembler, but using the environment we are looking at next. Uh, but you can see the syntax highlighting and I believe you press F5 or something for launching it and then. Um, Everything works very, very smoothly into Vice being the selected um, emulation environment. It also supports if you want to run C64 debugger. And I think we will have a special episode on C64 debugger because that is a very interesting tool. But again, so this is VS Code. And finally, we will have a look at the third option, which is my own uh, option of choice here. So you can take basically any text editor. The text editor used for this purpose is Sublime. And that is actually a text editor that will cost you real money. Um, I use this every day, so I, I was happy to pay for it. Uh, and for this to work, you also need uh, Vice and you also need Kick Assembler. And then there is a glue that makes this into like an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. Uh, that was made by Simon Oskarsson, also known as Swoppa or Swoffa of Noise. So what you do here is you press F7 and then you see the... Uh, all right, yeah, so it started. So what happened here is there was a little bit of source code, basic upstart, the routine that only does color, uh, change color in the border and then jump to start. I have fill here just for... <laughs> Uh, when I'm going to enter the debugger here, you would see that there are zeros rather than being artifacts of the of the old memory here. So you press uh, Alt H for entering the monitor, and what you see here is sort of it's the disassembly of the code that was generated by the assembler. And you can also see here that dot start. That's here. So the labels are fed uh, into the, 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 the labels generated during the assembly phase are fed to the emulated environment, which means that all the labels are also visible in the machine code monitor, which is super handy for debugging and for all sorts of purposes. And here is, you see the INC or INC TO20, which is increasing the color of the background. So that routine and then there is a jump to start and you see the jump to start. So just press F7 and you're done. Uh, I will have a specific on, on how to use this more in detail, but what you can also do, uh, I will just show you that, is uh, you can build D64s directly natively from Kick Assembler. I know that some people think that's a bloat. I personally love it. So you build a disk and uh, this just happens to be uh, Count Dacula, which is a game we fiddled with uh, a number of years ago. So here are the files. That's the file on disk. They turn into PRG files and these are the files that appear on the D64 image. This is actually a Fairlight logo, Deer Art by TNG, I would imagine. 
Uh, and then I also do patching using um, using Kick Assembler, and I will show you this more in detail. And then you, if you have bigger projects than just making small small little programs that run, you can also make uh, or produce a make file. So it's a bat file. Um, normal pc batch file and, and you type anything you do there um, and so this is assembling the uh, the previous program and then uh, rle pack and what have you not we will go through the details of this program this was just for telling you how to set up the environment so i would advise you to test if you are using vs code at work then then of course that's the path you should go if you're very new to this and you want everything everything in place before you do anything else the cbm prg studio might be your way uh, if you want to do like i do and and ensure that the tools have no limits and you're not particularly fond of VS Code or you don't use it, so you might use anything, then Sublime might be the thing for you. I think this opens up a number of opportunities for follow-ups on this where you can learn the details of this. So stay tuned, subscribe, press the clock button and see you next time.